Kia ora. Today I'm going to be sharing some of my tips and tricks on how you can base coat your miniatures and go from plastic miniature to painted miniature and keep your sanity intact all the while. Base coating, for most of us, is the bane of getting an army done. It's that massive hurdle you face when you get started, and it can often deter us from getting started at all. Now, I've done it, we've all done it, we've got really excited about an army, gone out and bought a whole lot of plastic miniatures, got them all assembled, lined them all up and went... <coughs> Sometimes I even get so overwhelmed that I just sell it. I'm just like, it's not worth it. I can't be bothered, sunk cost, move on, I'll just make this mistake again. I've painted hundreds, probably bordering on thousands of miniatures now, it's a lot, and that's a really scary thought for me to face. But base coating is always the grind. But during all of those thousands of miniatures that I've painted and from all of the content that I've watched from all of the amazing artists and army painters out there, I've learned a lot and today I thought I would share with you seven pretty achievable things that you can apply to your own process to hopefully get from that grey tide to something that really inspires you. Hey, we might even make it go from barely bearable to even enjoyable. I know that for me base coating is something that I like to do when I've maybe had a pretty long day but I still want to get some hobby done. Slapping on some base coats is nice and simple, it doesn't require a hell of a lot of concentration. So here are some tips on going from that grey plastic army to that army that you've always been dreaming about. And if you like this content, please like and subscribe. I'll be keeping this kind of army painting tips and tricks videos coming until I run out of tips and tricks or I don't even listen to them myself anymore and I get overwhelmed with my own grey plastic tide. So the first tip that I want to cover is having a plan. And so this is, you know, maybe it's planning your color scheme, planning the order of miniatures that you're going to be going in, having your desk set up, get everything locked and loaded and have a plan. Uh, you know, I have a Trello board with all of my different projects. I have all of my paints for a particular miniature always lined up in front of me whenever I get started. It just kind of takes that decision making process out once you get going. And so when you finally get that urge to paint, everything there is ready to go. Another thing that you can kind of approach with a plan is thinking about the order that you're going to be painting in. And so in the case of this Stormcast Eternal miniature, there's going to be a lot of metallic areas. And that's going to be the bulk of what you're painting. So when you're thinking about your paint order and what paints you're going to be using, think, okay, I'm going to get all this gold done first because then I can add a wash and that's not going to interfere with anything else that I'm painting. Or if, say, he's going to be gold and then there's going to be some brown and then there's going to be some steel and you think that all of that can be covered with one wash or you know it can all be within one kind of color color scheme uh, you know maybe it's all blues or something like that then get all of those done at the same time as well so having that all thought through means that when you come to paint it you can just be really deliberate and which uh, which parts of the miniature you're gonna paint first next quick tip I want to cover is picking the right primer um, this is a really simple thing and you've probably already done it before but I thought I should cover it. If you're going to be painting a miniature that's largely going to be dark colours, start with something dark. Alternatively, bright colours, start with something bright. Something, if it's going to be a hell of a lot of, uh, you know, all over the place colours, there's going to be some bright yellows but then there's going to be some dark browns or there's going to be some, you know, light blues mixed with some dark purples to get some cool contrast. A grey base coat can be a good start because it's kind of in between. You can go up from grey and you can go down from grey just as easily. Maybe you're going to be painting something with a lot of metallic colours and so a, uh, a steel primer will do, uh, will do you well for a good start. It'll already have that kind of metallic shine to it, whether you're going to be using contrast paints or acrylics over top. Um, if there's going to be a lot of metallic areas, this can be a good head start. Um, something else to consider as well is coloured primers. Um, these are not always a good choice because they can um, cause a lot of problems when it comes to uh, you know painting in complementary colors over top of a, a, a complementary color so if you're trying to paint uh, orange over top of this blue it's going to take quite a few coats 
But if you know that your uh, miniature scheme is going to be largely a single color, this applies lots to Space Marines, you know, Blood Angels, Dark Angels, where they have a lot of the same color, um, then a colored primer can be a good way to get started. Um, and something else that you might want to consider is a Zenithal. So if you're going to be using um, glazing or if you've got particularly detailed miniatures, sometimes I find a Zenithal can be a great, uh, great way to get you started. Um, it's once you add that Zenithal highlight, you can see how it's dark underneath and light on top. Um, you can really quickly pick out what details are which, um, much easier than when you've got a black miniature, um, a, a, you know, or a primed white miniature. So a Zenithal highlight can be a great way to quickly pick out what you need to paint um, and also get a nice, uh, nice early volume to the, uh, the coats that you're going to be putting over top. So the next thing I wanted to cover was using the right paint. Um, if you are a person who uses a lot of Citadel, you'll know already that there are base paints, layer paints, edge paints, but even with other companies, they have different consistencies um, across their range. And sometimes it's a matter of experimenting to find the ones that work for you, but certainly when it comes to Citadel, it's pretty simple to know uh, which ones work better for base coating, and those are the ones that are called base. Um, so when you see it in practice, you'll see that this, uh, this flash gets yellow which is a very bright yellow doesn't work well at covering nice and consistently for a base color you see the streaks it's very transparent it's very thin and then we've got this uh, kind of more earthy thicker a lot more pigment in it uh, Avaland and you'll see that this one just kind of covers covers the surface really quickly it's still thin because I thinned it down but in comparison you'll see that it kind of covers a lot more evenly and gets a lot more of the uh, the color that you want over top really fast and I'm using yellow as an example here because yellow is notoriously the worst color to prime with maybe white but yellow is pretty damn awful so as you can see this uh, Everland sunset color it's still quite transparent but it's put its impression over top of this gray uh, a lot more smoothly and consistently than the light color um, and the reason we want to use this kind of more uh, thicker and earthier base color um, is because it means that we're going to have to go over the miniature less times which is of course good for time um, but it's also good for uh, making sure that we don't have more opportunities to quit because you know if you're having to go over a miniature three times and then you see that you've got 15 miniatures to do that to you quickly do the math in your head and you go oh that's awful I'm going to either change this scheme or I'm going to just not do this at all um, which is of course not what we want when it comes to getting through that base coat phase so the next thing I wanted to cover, and this might seem like a bit of a no-brainer, is using the right size brush for the job that you're doing. Um, so when it comes to base coating, you obviously want to get paint down pretty quick. Um, but it also runs the risk of getting paint in colors where you didn't want to get paint. Um, and so that comes down to picking the right brush for the job. So in the case of this guy's cloak here, we've got this big large section around the back here, and we've got, you know, this kind of under cape underneath here. Um, and so I could use my size one and, you know, get into all of these details, make sure that I'm not getting it on anything else, but that's going to take a lot of time. And so I could upgrade and grab my size three, thin it down a little bit. And now we're really putting on paint and it's still accurate enough that we're not worrying too much about where it goes. Because this is of course base coat phase so there's going to be plenty of time later to touch things up but you can see now by upsizing my brush I can get through that red real quick. We don't however want to be using something like this for base coating a miniature this size because what's going to happen is it's just going to put on too much paint and so we're going to be getting it all over the place and the risk that we're going to be running is clogging up details that we don't want to clog up and so you can already see there's this little guy here and maybe if I was more careful then I wouldn't get it in there but if you're going to be more careful then you might as well get a different size brush and so yeah we're clogging up details with something this big so probably not good for this size of miniature and then of course on the other side of that coin we have our triple O here and so if we try and base coat with something this small we'll be here literally all day because we can only put on 
a little bit at a time it can't hold that much paint it doesn't have much of a coverage and so yeah i'm already bored i'm already thinking of quitting and i am gonna quit so use the right brush for the right job the next thing to cover is knowing the consistency of the paint that you're going to be applying. So when it comes to base coats, you want to obviously get it done as quickly as possible. You want to make sure that you don't have to go over the miniatures uh, as, as often as you would with like layering and whatnot. You want to kind of put down a coat and move on. Um, of course, if it's not thin enough though, you run the risk of clogging up details. So as the old saying goes, two thin coats uh, or, you know, one thick coat one thin coat I should say, well don't use that, but you can sort of see that I've added a little bit of water from over this side of my palette and I've mixed it in, it's not a hell of a lot but it's thinner than normal and that's what we want, see we've got a little bit of memory with our paint here on the wet palette, see how it's kind of shrinking back to where it began, but it's definitely not on our glaze level of memory. See how that's transparent and really shrinks down to its originally place? We definitely don't want it to be that thin. So when it comes to adding in our, our water to the paint, we want just the faintest bit of memory. See, it's quite slow moving back to where it goes. That's the consistency we want. Because when we start applying our coats, it covers well, but you can see it won't take longer than maybe two coats to get all of that red on to a consistency that we want. Using our glaze, however, you can see how thin that is, would be there all day. So the next tip is all about pacing yourself. And so, yeah, like I said earlier, you've gone out, you got really excited, you bought a whole lot of plastic, it's all sitting there, all assembled, there's not a single bit of paint on it, and it's terrifying. Uh, so break it down into small chunks. You know, think if you're playing skirmish games, think warbands. If you're thinking of a larger scale army, think of unit sizes. Grab yourself a small handful, something that you know you can kind of get done if maybe you had a week's worth of painting. If it's going to take a month, then it's probably going to be too long. So try and think of how long it would take to get through. Uh, it was Try and think of what you can get through in a week and use that as a kind of estimate to... Um, how much you should be tackling in one go. I find if it takes longer than a week to get through a unit, um, you know, if you're painting regularly that is, um, then you kind of maybe lose attention, uh, you start looking at maybe new miniatures, <laughs> you start the cycle again by going down to your local hobby store. Um, and so, yeah, break it down into a smaller chunk. So you can see here I've got five guys, what I'll do is I'll paint them from start to finish, I'll base them, maybe, uh, but I'll definitely get all of my base coats done in this small batch. Um, and if I'm really enjoying it, then I'll come back and do my washing and highlighting on them as well, and then come and do the next five when these are all done. And what this does is it creates a nice positive feedback loop because you can get through five much faster than you can obviously get through 40 uh, to the same standard anyway. Um, and so you're kind of ticking things off and getting things finished a lot faster, which makes you feel good. It makes you feel like you're achieving a hell of a lot more than if you kind of pick a big old bundle of 40 and all you can do in a week is base coat their weapons. You know, that's not going to make you feel as good as if you finished five dudes from start to finish in a week. So yeah, break it down, approach it in smaller chunks, and that'll hopefully uh, help you clear through that backlog a little bit faster. Now the last tip I'm going to share is a bit of an arrogant one it's a little bit of a no-brainer you might think it's a bit stupid it's a very obvious one but honestly just do it just get all of your paints ready have your color scheme in mind get all of your planning done think of all of the things I've been talking about in this video sit down and get that first bit of paint on the miniature because honestly the first brush stroke is the hardest one but once you get going once you get into a bit of a routine once you start seeing things uh, go from plastic to color you'll get a lot more inspired and you'll be wanting to get them done a hell of a lot faster it's a terrible tip i know but honestly the sooner begun the sooner done so just grab your brushes grab your mini sit down put your paint on the palette put your paint on the brush and put that paint on the miniature it's really that easy it's we make it out to be a hell of a lot harder sometimes when we look at the big gray plastic pile but seriously, once you get started, it happens pretty quick. So there you have it. There's some top tips from me. I've been base coating miniatures. 
washing miniatures, highlighting miniatures for a while now, and that's pretty much all there is to it. Just get some paint, sit down, have a plan, and get into it. So, I hope that this has kind of given you a little bit of confidence to maybe go out and get through your own uh, pile of shame. <laughs> Uh, it's certainly gotten me chubbed to get going with these Stormcasts. I've been really enjoying painting these Grimcast Eternals, I've been calling them. Um, I've got an Anvils of Heldenhammer one there waiting for me to push on with. So after this video, I'm going to go and continue work on that. So thank you for watching. I hope you're staying well during these crazy times in the world. Um, but, you know, if you've got the opportunity, you've got a bit of time at home, that's a good chance to tackle some of that plastic... Thanks again for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, next time I will be looking at maybe looking at uh, I'll be maybe looking at maybe looking at maybe looking at I'll be batch painting in the next one. So in the next How to Paint Army, I'll be looking at how you can uh, tackle getting through batches in a way that makes you not want to uh, throw yourself in front of a bus. Thanks again. I'll catch you next time. Bye.